Alpha and welcome to another Django tutorial. My name's Tom with LearnPythonTutorial.com and today's tutorial we're going to build off what we did in the previous tutorial. In the previous tutorial we went and added our model to our Django administration site or page if you will and in this tutorial we're going to make it look better, give it more functionality and uh, it's actually pretty easy so we're going to go ahead and do that. So right now what we have is <clears throat> this is our list display it displays our tutorials and right now we only have one tutorial in here and um, all I see is the title intro to Django okay well how about if I want to know if it was published or a draft when it was published um, what the slug was things like that um, well we can change the list display here we can change a lot of things we can add a filter we can add a search function. We can do a lot of things with this, but we need to know how to do it. So, and like I said, it's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and, first of all, yeah, my server's running. Your server can be running for this, so there's no need every time we make a code change when we're making these changes to restart your server, so you can leave it running. That's why I was checking to see if it was running, so when I make changes, I can click back and show you guys what we have done. All right, so I'm going to open up my uh, text editor here. I'm going to go into admin.py. Now, the first thing we need to do is um, create a subclass of model admin. Um, model admin is a class that is in the admin um, package, and what it does is controls the look and feel of our uh, admin site. So we need to create a subclass of that. And we saw this before um, when we created a subclass of the models, the models.model. This is a subclass of model, and we're creating a subclass of the uh, model admin. So we're going to call it class and lesson admin. Now, this is the norm. Usually, when you create a class in the admin here, that's going to change the functionality of the admin site or the look and feel or how it works. We're going to call it lesson admin, so you know what it is, right? Lesson admin, then we're just going to be admin dot model admin. And here's our class, all right? Now, if I was to run this right now, and I'm going to save it, I'm going to get an error first off. If you remember back to uh, Python Programming 101, in, if you create a class or a function, um, if you don't have an indent here, which no, has, there's no code, you're going to get an error. So we're going to get an error if you see indentation error right here. When I went back to our terminal where our server was running, it's going to be indentation error. So I'm going to put pass in here so it skips over that indentation error and continues on. And here we go. Our server's back up and running. And I'll go back into our page here. I'm going to refresh. Now nothing's happened. Okay, and the reason is, once we hit create the class, we gotta give it some rules here. But we also need to hook in our class, our custom class here, our subclass of the model admin, into our registration function, our register function down here. So we're gonna do that by putting a comma and then lesson admin. All right. So we just give this argument here of lesson admin. Now it takes this class and our lesson model into the register and shows it in our um, the Django administration site. So let's take out the pass here. All right. And the next thing we want to do is we want to change the list display. What we looked at beforehand was the list here, and all we have is lesson and it's intro to Django. Well, if I come to this page and I'm looking for a specific lesson, I would like a little bit more information here. So let's change the list display. Let's display some more stuff here. So let's go in here, and we're going to do list um, display. And in here, I want to display, and this is in the tuple format, uh, the title, the whoops, slug. Now I might not keep slug there when we go into production, but keeping slug there for when we're uh, working development helps so we can see the URLs versus what they should be. Um, 
create it. So this will give us the created date. And then uh, let's do status. And status, if you remember correctly, was if it's published or a draft. All right, so we save that. We go back in. We refresh our page. And there we go. And as you can see, we got title. We got slug. We got created. And we got status. So this is published. It was created July 23rd, 2016 at 3.54 p.m. This is my slug. And this is my title. Pretty cool, right? So with that simple line of code right there, we changed the look and feel of the Django administration site. So that is cool, right? Um, another thing I would like to do is maybe add a filter where if we click on, um, for example, uh, the created date, if it's created in the last seven days, it will show that. So we can do something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do a filter, a list filter, it's just list filter. And the same thing, a tuple. And then what things you want to filter. Well, I don't want to filter title because it's pretty stupid. I'm going to fill with the title. It's just going to list a bunch of titles. Um, we can do a created date. Uh, let's do updated date. It works great with dates and. Um, like uh, choices, like our status. So we'll put our status one in there. We'll save that. We'll go ahead and open up our page again. Open up our page. Go ahead and refresh. Refresh it again. And as you can see, there's a filter over here on the right hand side now. Now I can pick today, the past seven days, this month, this year. Update it, same thing. And then draft or publish. If I click on publish, this comes up. If I click on draft, well, it's going to remove them all. All right, and I click on all. So that's a pretty cool feature, right? And that was another one that we added with this simple line of code. Now, um, another one I would like to enter is uh, search fields. Uh, how about if we went into our our uh, interface here and we wanted to search for something in one of our lessons? Well, that would be a pretty cool feature, right? So. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we're going to do search fields. And this is tuple also. And what I want to be searchable is probably title and the body. So I'll just show the body. All right. Um, I really don't need to search the created date or the updated date or the status because I can do that with filter. So search fields is a little different where if I type in a word it's going to search the title or the body and return it to me so let's go ahead and do that we'll save that and go ahead and refresh sometimes you gotta refresh a couple times just until the server catches back up alright cool so now I got a search box up here so let's try it out let's see what we can do let's do uh, two we'll search for two Oh, it returns this one because I have intro two. Um, let's search for cat in the hat. Oh, it returns nothing because I didn't do anything with cat in the hat. So, pretty cool, right? Um, so, that feature was pretty simple to add too. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned in the previous tutorial that, um, that I wanted to have our slugs basically pre-populate pre themselves. So when I start typing like, uh, let's do a second Django tutorial, I would like the slug to go ahead and pre-populate itself so I don't have to type the second tutorial again with the dashes or the underscores in here. Um, so we can do that using a pre-populated field. Now the pre-populated field, you can use it with several different types of fields within the the Django interface, uh, admin interface, but it's mainly designed to work with the slug. Um, it's not designed to work with date time field or anything like that, but it can work with title and it can work with body. It doesn't work with choices, um, but it does work with um, text fields and um, like slug fields and stuff like that. So that works. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Go back to our code. And we're going to do pre populated fields. 
All right, instead of a tuple that we've been using in these, this is going to be a dictionary. And you want to put um, which one you want to be pre-populated first. So the slug, we want that one to be created on its own. And then remember with dictionaries, we have a colon. And then in here, we're going to put a tuple. And it's going to be pre-populated by title. So we want, when we type the title, we want the slug to be created. Now, the pre-populated field is going to go ahead and enter um, or add some JavaScript. So when we go ahead and start typing our code, it's going to go ahead and actually um, kind of copy us while we're typing. So we'll take a look at that in a second here. Let me just clear this out, refresh this. All right, so we're going to say second to Django. And you can see down below title is actually typing out um, the pre-populated field tutorial so that's pretty cool now if I went and and another cool part about this is it's kind of SEO ready so you see I typed the and disappeared SEO uh, title the cat it takes out the common words that you know that Google doesn't like well, what it does is go ahead and puts in the words that are more um, SEO friendly. So that's pretty cool too. So it pre-populates them. So as of right now, I think this is what we're going to go with with our admin interface. I think uh, this is getting us where we need to go. Now there's a bunch of other options we could add and adjust to our admin interface. And we'll cover them in, a, in uh, later tutorials. But for now, with the Learn Python tutorial site, I think this is all we need right now. If you have any questions, leave a comment on YouTube or on our website at learnpythontutorial.com. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share the video. And don't forget to check back for the next tutorial. And we're going to actually work on um, querying our database. So we'll see you in that one.